to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Today, Carolyn Flannery, the principal of Carolyn Rubefeld Designs and Workroom C, joins me. Located in the San Francisco Bay Area, Carolyn already had a decade of hospitality experience as well as having owned her own antique store before opening her design firm in 2006. As a mother of four herself, Carolyn's ideal client, which she shares today how she very intentionally markets to these clients, are families with children and families who understand the value of having family-friendly spaces with durable, multifunctional furnishings. Okay, Her work highlights unconventional lighting, savvy design solutions, and the healthy mix of high and low pieces. In addition to designing interiors, Carolyn Helms Workroom C, a textile company that offers fabrics by the yard, pillows, draperies, and bespoke soft goods. Marketing to this particular demographic, this is exactly what we're going to talk about today. But first, let's talk about article.com, shall we? All right, if you insist. (laughs) Article.com as you must know by now, is your go-to place for furniture with clean mid-century lines. They have furniture for projects for living rooms, dining rooms, offices, and outdoor spaces. Clean designs, helpful, knowledgeable service in their trade division, which is run by design professionals just like you, are all the hallmarks of an experience with working with Article. Okay, add to that an outstanding ordering process and an exceptional delivery and return program. What else could you ask for? I don't know. I I think you just got to go over and sign up for your trade account today and use this URL so they know you heard about them from me. Well designed dot article dot com. That's well designed dot article dot com. All right, so Carolyn is going to share a strategy that she has been using for years now to keep her name and her her firm's name top of mind with all the busy families in the Bay Area, okay? Now, do you want to know what it is? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to spill the beans right now. As long as you pinky swear, you will not say, oh, that's not going to be that big of a deal, all right? Promise? Carolyn and her team have developed an organized process for donating gift cards for her two-hour consult to all of the fundraisers at all of the local schools in her area, okay? Now, don't poo-poo this, all right? Stick around and listen to how this one strategy has been a mainstay in keeping her pipeline full for more than 10 years. Okay. And before I get to the show, a quick shout out to Nicole Ballin of Ballin PR. Her firm specializes in the design profession and you can find her at B-A-L-L-I-N-P-R.com. Okay, I'm going to introduce you to Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn, thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, Luann. Thanks so much for having me. Carolyn, I am, uh, you know what's funny about this interview today is I love the grassroots way that you have built your interior design firm. At this point, your firm is, you know, 15, you know, years in, right? Well, 15 years designing and how old is the firm? Tell me again. Technically 12. 12. Okay. So mm-hmm. it's not, you know, you're not a hashtag baby designer out there, right? You're like, you're, you're, you're a smart lady. You're a seasoned designer. Um, but the thing is that when we got to know each other through email, um, I learned that you built your business 
basically by leaning into the, I'm going to call it the PTA circuit right? <laughs> that's, that's fair. <laughs> and what's funny to me is, and what I liked about the um, information that you shared over the email with me was that I have to say, when I have worked with designers one-on-one -on -one or in the masterminds, I have said to them, you know, reach out to your PTAs, find out when they're having their tricky change and their Chinese auctions and the other different um, fundraising events. And they're right. sort of like this eye roll. Honestly, there's like, all right, Lynn, like, oh, what am I going to do that for? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, don't do it. You know what I mean? And hey. so, but the thing is, what I love is that you can literally track the success of your business on the foundation of having an organized approach, even though you're going to share with us. I know you told me that it happened organically, but from mm -hmm. there, you, you saw ho hey yo we're on to something here mm -hmm. and at this point 12 years into business it is still a concerted effort on your part that this is part of your marketing strategy so I yes. love it I love it so why don't you tell us how it initially happened for you Carolyn well so initially when my daughter started preschool I was one of those moms who didn't know how to say no yet and <laughs> ended up being the room parent. The raw blood, up... the new blood. Mm -hmm. We like those when yep. we're the older moms. Yep. We're like, go get them, the kindergarten moms. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. I, they sucked me in like nobody's business. <laughs> so as the, you know, one of the new auction co-chairs, it was suggested that I donate some of my services to the auction to be bid on, which hadn't occurred to me at all because we were looking for restaurants and hotels and vacation stays and et cetera, et cetera. And I put that out there and got a lovely family that actually hired me to do some work for them. And it turned into a real job from a two hour consult donation. So then I did it again. And then I, offered it to friends, kids, friends, kids, schools for their auctions. And then we turned it into a actual marketing strategy. And I've got a lot of long-term clients now that I've had for the last 10 years because they came to me through the school auctions. It's crazy. I love it. I mean, the thing is, what's funny is it is a, it is a long tail strategy, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm sure over the course of these, this 10, 12, 15 years of doing this strategy, you probably have had the times where somebody took their two hour consult and you never heard from them again, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. But then I also imagine there's times when the person took advantage of their two hour consult and they didn't hire you, but maybe their friend or their neighbor did or their sister or their mother did, right? Yeah, that's happened, but it's also turned into, you know, a half a million dollar project. So when that kind of thing happens, when you have the two hour consult that doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't matter because right. they know somebody who knows somebody and that school still has other parents that are busy. And the good thing about the schools is that there's always new parents coming in that you haven't met yet. It's crazy. It's so good. I, I love it. So the thing is now, so what it is, is you package it up. It's two hour free consultation. And mm -hmm. in that process of the two hour consultation, do what else do you do for free? I didn't even ask you this before, so I have no idea what you're going to say. So the thing is, oh. do you have an initial phone call with them where you spend 15 or 20 minutes getting to know them? Or do you're just like, look, you got a two hour consult. I'm going to show up. That's that. And when I'm leave, it's over. Or do you do some sort of follow up? Like what's it, what tell us about your process of, of giving them this gift? So I treat them the way I would treat any new potential client. So I do spend some time on the phone with them doing an intake and getting a sense of what we would be working on. If they have any Pinterest books, any boards or any house idea books, I ask them to send those to me. And if they have any pictures of their home or the areas that they want to work with so that I don't go in blind, it would be 
if somebody wants a color consult, I should have all of my paint decks with me so that we can actually run through that. If they want to know how are we going to install blah, 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 maybe I should have the laser measurer with me so that I'm prepared for whatever they throw at me. And also, you know, the, the wheels can start spinning and I come in and sound like I, you know, have put a little bit of thought into it. And then often I will follow up. I, I definitely follow up with them after. Thank you so much. Here's some of the answers to the questions you asked for. But while I'm in the consult, I do say, okay, I'm just going to go and you're going to take notes. I'm, I'm not taking notes for them. I'm not forwarding notes after the way I would do for a professionally paid consult. Okay. So, uh, so, so you do also part of your services have a, mm -hmm. a, a paid and is the paid consult a two hour consult? Yes. And what do you charge for that? 500. Okay. So, so what happens is when you do the paid consult, you take notes and you follow up with a sort of review or action plan. Right. Okay. Because that way, that way, if it, if it is going to go, if it is going to go anywhere, that's already documented and we can work off of that initial meeting. Right. Okay. So now going back to the free consult, I like that you do start the process as your regular intake process that you introduce them to your firm the way you professionally mm -hmm. introduce any potential client to your firm so it's that phone call the getting to know you you're starting to break the ice you're also like you said getting yourself prepared so that you have some ideas kicking around before you walk through the front door right now right yeah and so and and in that phone call you say do you prepare them and say this is how it will be i'm going to come for two hours um you you tell them then that you can write yes. and take any notes, right? Okay. What are the types well, of things? I, go ahead. Go ahead. So when I, I let them know that we will do any sort of any sort of design service consult that they want during that two hours. So for them to use the time wisely. And I'll also tell them if there's something that we're walking through the space that you want help with and it only takes an hour. I'm going to leave and go do, you know, I'm going to go research a sofa for you or send you fabric samples or whatever in that extra hour that's left over. If there's time left over, I'll, I'll do additional tasks and send that the results of those off to them after oh. the consult as well. Okay, so that's nice. I mean, you're basically truly giving the gift of two hours. And if we need a half hour here, but I spend an hour and a half at my studio researching items and sending you links, that's fine too. Yep, absolutely. Okay, okay. now, um, how, how, let's talk about... My brain is going two ways. That's why I'm hesitating. I, first, I want to think about the pitfalls of this, like the things okay. that you're, you know, now you're seasoned. Did you find that when you were a newer designer that you had, were there any things that you can recall back going and doing this where you thought, oh, in the beginning, I got sucked into being there three hours or I got sucked into doing this or I offered to do follow up and now I finally honed it to this is how I do it and this is what happened or has it always been clear for you how to handle it? I think that the ad, an initial interview with somebody can, you know, go a zillion different ways. And the more experience I have, the more I, I can sense the red flags initially faster, more easily. Mm. But I think that the, the learning curve was more, I don't have to put this out to every single school in my area mm. because then... I can end up, you know, during auction season, I'm getting 20 phone calls and I don't actually have time to do that. Um, but the other, and the other lesson was, yes, you've purchased your consult at your school auction, but I am not available until next, I'm, I'm not available next week to do it. We've got to put this on the calendar in a way that's convenient for me because typically it's, it's not just two hours, it's travel time and the phone call phone, phone yeah. call and all of that so you know it ends up it ends up eating a good part of a day mm. so i'm much more strategic about 
who I'm donating to and I'm more strategic about how I schedule the consults. So okay. I think that's probably my biggest, those are my biggest lessons. Okay. So, and I love that because the fact of the matter is, is that you are the professional, right? So if somebody wins a free gift and they call you and say, oh, I got my free gift. I want my free consult. And you say, that's awesome. You know, and maybe it's, you know, May 1st. Okay. I'm scheduling appointments the week of June 1st. I can have Tuesday mm -hmm. or Thursday. If somebody says, oh my goodness, I don't want to wait till then. I'm like, I'm sorry, sweetie. It's a free gift. Remember? <laughs> Like, you know, like, right? No, it absolutely. But I also, you don't but say I it that do, way. That's inside no, voice. but I also do keep in mind that they made a donation to the school when they purchased it. And I have donated my time in, you know, to support the school. So it is, you know, it's a community building thing. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm running a business and I made a donation. And yes, so you are going to have to take a back seat to the renovation that the contractor's calling me every five minutes on. Right. I, and I, I don't mean to be mean about it. I, I, I understand that they have, you know, the free gift they have paid for. I get that. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but they might have paid 50 bucks, not 500, or they might have, right. you know what I'm saying? And and it isn't lost on me. Believe me, I Window Works contributes to every PTA in Livingston. There's seven uh, schools in Livingston, and we do the, the same mm -hmm. thing at every single one. Um, but I just really meant to say that, you lead the conversation. You are the professional. And it's just because right. somebody has gotten something doesn't mean that, you know, the paying client that you have a $30,000 renovation in mm -hmm. misses a tile laying day because you can't be there to supervise the tile laying because you have to do this. That your right. caution is to still manage your schedule properly, right? right? You, you know what I mean? That's what I'm, I'm leaning into. Well, and I think that that's also something that I've learned as a more experienced designer. You know, when when we're just starting out, we 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 want to capture anything and everything mm. because we're trying to grow our businesses. And now I have a much more stable, steady stream of business, so I can be a little bit pickier and a little bit choosier. And it, and it really is about directing my business the way that I want to. Right. That's definitely. the advantage yes. of having grown it. Exactly. Exactly right. Okay. And so the other thing in there that you mentioned is as you participated each year in the various school districts and their um, events, you, what do you do? Do you do you yearly sit down and review the clients and the meetings that happen or do you do it? Would you make a note somewhere right in the moment that this school generally the leads are are just not the demographic either in style and price budget or whatever that these are not our ideal client? Like how do you intentionally make note of the school districts that you don't seek out any longer? So intentionally what we're doing is we're, we've got a spreadsheet with the schools, the auction date, the auction person, and then who, whether we find out because they've called us directly right away, or sometimes the school will let us know who has received the certificate. So mm. we put that name in and then we sort of have an idea. And then, and then it's just, you know, going through it the next year, it's just memory. Um, okay, that particular client, okay, I remember that from whenever we did that and that went well and turned into a client or, oh no, that was an absolute disaster and they were complete hoarders and it was scary and I couldn't wait to get out of there. <laughs> so I like that. So there's a spreadsheet and you have all the school names, you have the event names, you probably have the location, the city that they're located, you know, part of the city that they're right. located in and then you have the client name that was attached to it and then the next year before you either reach out or do your um, phone calls or whatever, you're reviewing and you're saying, you know, right. three years in a row, the meeting that have come out of this particular school have not turned into and, and the thing is and I have to say I don't think 
that you correct me. I don't think that the criteria is three years in a row and we haven't converted one to a project. It's two or three years in a row and they're truly not our ideal client, whether right. they've converted right. to a project or not. Because you could work with a school for three years in a row. Each of those people could be completely lovely families that you would have worked with. They didn't choose to hire you at that moment. But the fourth year could be the jackpot year, right? Right, absolutely. And also, you know, there have been occasions where a client that found me at an auction that turned into a big project then said to, you know, the friend three streets over, right? you should talk to her. That That's happened as well. So, but there's also been, you know, it's, it, the. I think another thing that I've learned is it's not always, it's not always the the private schools that appear to be the mm. swankiest mm-hmm. that are the best clients for me. So I've learned, you know, there was one, you know, very fabulous will be, will remain nameless school where the auction chair actually purchased the t- certificate and we did the consult and then asked me for extra services and then didn't pay me. And I had to <laughs> send her, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to send you to collections if you oh, don't pay God. me. And so I don't, I don't, I don't, I took that school off my list. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have to say, it, it, my gut feeling on just a surface gut reaction having, and of course, I always filter these things through my window works experience, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. my gut feeling on it is, I would agree with you. I would not, I mean, this woman not paying you notwithstanding, but I would agree with you that I don't necessarily think that the jackpot is the expensive, swanky, uh, private schools because my experience is those people have their go-to interior designers. You're mm-hmm. looking for that next level down where you can make an impact and you can create mm-hmm. a relationship with a community and a demographic of families that didn't realize that they could work with an interior designer and it could be an experience that they could do and afford and it would make their lives amazingly much right. more easy. Right? Right. And that is one of the things is that most of consistently most of these consults that come out of this kind of donating are almost always they've never used an interior designer before and this seems like I've heard it over and over again this seems like a really good way for us to get our feet wet test the waters see if this is something that we find value in Mm -hmm. and then if I can prove that to them, then we're off and running. Right. Well, because I'm going to tell you what, I, we say it on the show all the time. It, you know, most of us are terrified to hire you guys. It's as simple as that. We are. Right. I mean, we just right. are. And it's not because you're scary. It's because we don't understand what you do. And, <laughs> and it's because, you know, I don't want to be, you know, negative, but very many don't have a very clear way of expressing what you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And, and we're and everybody's afraid we're going to come in and spend all their money yes. on, you know, drapes. Well, no, there's no fear of that. We all want right. everybody no, to spend their money on drapes, Carolyn. Drapes. Come on. Yes. <laughs> it's my job to convince people that that's what they should be spending their money yeah. on. And here's why. <laughs> I think that I there is there is a huge there's a a huge fear wh- when you say that that sort of second level of um, that second group of clients that didn't re- they didn't grow up with an interior designer right. or they're right. not hiring their mother's interior designer or everybody on the block has an interior designer or they all have their go to people. Right. It's the next level that they can benefit from it. They can they're busy. They can't do it themselves. They want to have the kind of environment that they see on HGTV or Mm -hmm, whatever mm -hmm. that we can deliver for them that they can't take care of themselves. Right. It's true. And the thing about it is, is to your point, this is a way to be introduced and not feel indebted, not feel like you're going to get, you know, surprised by a bill or the process or whatever. Because when I, I, and I don't know how serious you guys take me on this because I say it often enough and I hope you take me seriously. But when I say we don't know what you do, what I mean is we don't know how you price what you do. Right. 
That's what I mean. We know you're going to make the house pretty. That part I know. So when I have had my one-on-one conversations with designers at live events and so forth, you know, they're like, oh, well, I mean, it's simple. We're going to have a design meeting and we're going to present you with a plan and then we're going to do the, you know, specifying. And I'm like, right, but that's not how you price it. How do you price it? And that's the conversation that you need to have at your fingertips clearly and concisely so that I, in a two, three, four, five minute window, can visualize if I think I could fit into that, I could afford that, I could stomach that. Because if I have to ask you five times, then first of all, most people aren't going to ask you five times because they're going to be embarrassed too. Okay. And, and secondly, if I have to ask you five times, then we've got a problem because, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm clearly not explaining it properly. Right, right, right. And so, and, and, and here's what I know to be true. And this is why I love what you're doing in the way that you started and you built your business on this marketing platform this way is because I do understand that it takes going out there time and time and time again and explaining what you do before you get the light bulb moment where it's like, Oh, this is how I explain my process. This is how I explain how I price for my process. And so this is an an ideal way to do that and not have any pressure and, and, and also to sort of really feel like you could build a base of repeat clients just as you've done, Carolyn, right? Yeah. And I think also when I'm doing this, I, I tend to be, um, I'm a very direct, very honest person. So I'm, I say to my clients often, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. And you're not always going to like me during the process, but you're going to be really happy with the end results. And when I walk into a consult like this, where they've already paid for it, I've already expressed that I'm giving this time. There's a freedom in that where I'm actually just able to be on as a designer. I'm, it's a different way of selling, I guess. You know, when I go on an, an informational interview where I'm sitting down with the client and we're getting to know each other, I always have a fear of giving, am I giving too much away of myself that, you know, the, the potential client takes it and runs with it and I never hear from them again. I've just given them the information that they need to go do whatever they're going to do. Mm-hmm. We all have that. That's, you know, it's a constant debate whether we charge for the initial consult or whether we don't charge and what we're giving when we do do it, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And this is a very pure way to give those services and actually be on a real audition. And Often it hasn't necessarily turned into a giant project, but I have been hired. Please come back for another two hours. Please help oh. me take care of this. Please help me take care of that. So that is also, you know, that that steady base income gets provided by okay. and, those kinds of things. And when they want to do that for another two hours, then it's $500. Right. Okay. Because I've already set that up. Right. Because you've told them ahead of time, this is what, this is the value of what you've just, you know, put your tricky tray in for $50. It's normally $500. And I'm going to come over, I'm going to do all this and blah, blah, blah. Now, how often were you, and I'm sure it happens, if it ever happened, I'm sure it happened more in the beginning and probably doesn't happen any longer. But did you have situations where you get to the, you know, hour 45 mark and they don't look like they're slowing down and you had to be the one to say, so it's about 10 minutes to the hour. And do you have any final questions or before I leave, I just want to go over this one last thing. You know, how did you have, have you had situations with that that you can share for tips and pointers? Oh, absolutely. But like you said, well, I'm the professional, so I'm also going to keep an eye on the time. I I wouldn't expect the client to do that. That's my, that's my responsibility. So I'm keeping an eye on the time and I'm also setting it up in the, in the phone call. I'm saying, okay, we will have two hours of time to do whatever you want. So we want to sort of be strategic. And then when I get there, okay, let's break it down exactly how are we 
how are we going to spend the time so that we make the most of it for you? Mm -hmm. So, but yes, initially when I started doing this, you know, I would get sort of a little bit stuck and we were on something and I didn't want to be rude. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it went longer than two hours, but you know, in the general scheme of things, these are, these are the things we, you know, this is how we learn. Right. Well, and and that's my point. I think that I I have total compassion until you really get your sea legs and, you know, you get stuck and you think you're, how can I be, this is be rude of me. Like you said, I just Mm -hmm. cut them off and blah, blah, blah. But I think that there are strategies, right? So, you know, to your point, you're the professional, you've got an eye on the time and it gets to be the hour and a half mark. Okay. It's the 145 mark. We don't start a whole conversation about the kitchen. You know, you have to say, I think, no, we, we, we final, we, we flesh out the, okay, uh, we've talked about all of these things. We have about 15 more minutes. Is there anything that you need further elaboration on? Is there anything that you, you know, do you want extra time to work on anything? Is there anything you want me to take back to the office and work on? Because that also comes up, it'll, that'll come up during a consult. Oh, this is actually a big nut for me to crack and I need more, I'm going to need more help with this. So while, you know, you're, I'm I'm wrapping it up in a way that is reiterating what we've talked about, making sure that all of their questions have been answered, that we can answer in that time period. If there's anything they didn't understand, you know, a lot of times I'm going really, really fast. And mm. they're like, okay, wait a second. You know, I took notes on this, so can you please clarify this? And And that's, yeah, absolutely. So that's how we, I, that's how I try to stay on try to stay on track. And for the most part, I mean, two hours with a a new person, it's actually a long time. So most of the, you know, probably half of the time we're done in, you know, an hour and a half. And I'm saying, okay, well, I'm going to go back to the office and for a half an hour, I'm going to give you this resource and find that for you and answer that question for you and, you know, send you 15 paint swatches or whatever. Right, 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 right. So that's nice. That's good to know. It's good to know that your experience is that a lot of the times you actually only need the hour and a half and you offer them a little follow-up for the tying out the loose ends. Right. Okay. Okay. So now let's talk about from a a practical standpoint, have you had situations where, well, first of all, I want to know is when you're there and somebody is like saying, yeah, you know, I really would rather, you know, let's dive a little further deeper into this. Do you bring a contract and sign it right there and say, here's two hours and go right to an iPad and go right to your calendar? Or do you go back to your office and say, I'll call you and we'll get on the calendar. You give me a credit card. How do you do it? I do bring, I do bring a a sample uh, contract with me. I'm not going to bring something that they can sign in that moment because I'm going to send them, um, I'm going to send them an invoice through the, you know, the accounting system okay. that we have in the office. Um, and I carry a paper calendar. So yes, I would schedule it, but then to confirm that appointment, I would expect the appointment to be paid in advance. Right. Right, 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 right. Okay, awesome. All right, I love it. And then do you do, when you are working with somebody, whether they have indicated or not that they want to take the next step further, if you get the sense that this is a a good match for you, that you can see that the project that they want to do is not going to be something that they are going to adequately be able to handle, maybe because of their busy life or blah, blah, blah. Do you do active follow-up and try to convert them into, a um, full service client in any way, however soft or nice it is, do you do that? Yeah, because if we've, well, if we've spoken about some things, one of the things that I'm going to close the appointment with is, you know, we talked about this, that, and the other thing, and I'd be happy to write up a proposal for you to give you an idea of how much time it would take to take care of that particular situation and, you know, send that with, you know, the, you know, the put together the scope yeah. and yeah. And how that would, how that would look so that, and yes or no, usually it's a yes. And I send the proposal and then follow up, et cetera. But do you say that to, do you say that to every 
potential client that you know would be a good fit for you, whether they have expressed more work or not? In other words, do you say that? Like, look, I, I, you know, I, there, I'm, do you, do you open the door is my point on it. I open the door. I open the door if I think that it's a good fit. You know, one of the things that we all have a difficult time with is, okay, where are the red flags? Mm -hmm. And is this really the best project for my business? So as much as I can in that time, I'm trying to feel that out. And, you know, if if the husband's trailing with, well, how much is this all going to cost? And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it, that's, that's a red flag. Yeah. Um, so there's times when, you know, there's times when this feels great. These people are lovely. The house is fantastic. We would have so much fun doing X, Y, or Z with it that I'm going to push a lot harder. I mean, gently, but harder yes. to open that door and send the proposal Okay. So it, the point is you has, have to be conscious about it. You have to be aware of when to, uh, you know, engage and start the selling process. Right. And also if my docket is full at that particular time, that's something that I need to know going into that right. and say, okay, well, I actually don't really have time to take on a new project. It's July and I can't do anything really until November. I've got to weave that in somewhere in the you know, this, this could be great to work together. If you do want to do that down the road, say in November, that right. would be perfect. Right. And then, you know, try and, you know, send a, and then send a, a follow-up at the beginning, the end of October. Hey, we had talked about doing this. Did you still want to pursue anything? Let me know if I can do anything and be of service. Right, 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 right. Love it. Okay. Yep. So advice for someone starting out who maybe doesn't have access to the network of the PTA moms because they don't have children. So is it but just you, any of them? You can, you don't have to have, children. no, that's what I'm saying. So, so is it just call yeah. the grammar schools, call the high schools and just say, um, you know, can yep. I, do, do you do a charity event? Do you do a charity auction? Can I have the names of the uh, co-chairs and I'd love to be um, to donate, right? It's like, it's see, yep. it's simple. And it's easy. It's very easy. It's also often all of that information is on a school's website at this oh, point. Oh, so okay. Can, I forget about that. So you, yeah. So you can start the calendar. There's the, the online donation form that you can fill out. You can, you can create, you know, I've got a, a, a pretty little certificate that comes in a pretty little envelope. Um, sometimes depending on the school, I'll also donate a pillow that goes with the pretty little envelope, mm -hmm. one of the pillows in, in the fabrics that we, that we've designed so that that sort of gives a, a visual to it and something, a takeaway. Right, right, right. At the right. Auction, so it's not just right? an envelope sitting there in, in a, in a basket. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then, so it's, it's fairly, it's fairly straightforward and easy. You, you just have to, and often as a parent, we, we know all of the schools in the area, right? but so you got to do a little digging to figure out who, what, where, when, why, because you don't have that experience. Right. And if you, you're not a parent, you don't necessarily, you know, know the demographics of the different school districts and so forth. Right. But it's really easy to know that they liquor these parents up at these auctions and <laughs> they make spontaneous decisions. Is the whole point. <laughs> Let's throw a few more raffle tickets in that basket over there. Exactly. <laughs> that's fun. I like that. Okay. So that's funny. Okay. So, but the thing about it is, is I don't know if it's the same for you, but for the, our school district here, it's in Livingston. It's pretty much the spring is the big season for this. Is it the same by you, Carolyn? The spring is the big season. It is. There's, there are some schools that are doing it in the fall, but it is mostly a spring thing. Um, but we are often a little bit quieter during the summer because we, I'm designing mostly for families and, and families are, you know, wrapped up with the kids being in camp, you know, schedules shift so much in the summer that that's actually a, a little bit of a slower time for us, you know, June and July. So that if people are calling us for those consults, that's okay because right. we have the time to, to do those. Right, right. But the point is, is that, you know, 
you could sit there and lay your strategy out in the fall and identify the half a dozen, two dozen schools in a 20 mile radius of your studio right. and make those contacts and be all ready to go. Get your pillows ready, get your whatever ready uh -huh. and get your cards ready. In other words, you know, if you've never done this before, you don't want to wait until March to, to, no. to lay your strategy out because you, like you said, you're going to want to design a pretty, you know, thing and make it look amazing. And, you know, um, and, and, and other designers too, I'm sure you probably have done it on occasion. We'll put together a full basket and maybe there's right. some other home items and stuff. Like it's crazy right. what you could do. Right. So that's something that it's not a, it's not an, it's not an immediate gratification. Right. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, a long-term goal being in the area that you're in because mm -hmm. it's going to take a little bit of time. Also, you know, I have people who bought something a year ago and, now and haven't used it. Me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I have that at window works too. They'll surface like, that's why we put the date on the back of the gift certificate we use. Not that I have an expiration. They can call me. I don't care when, but I've had people that have held onto it for four and five years. Oh, yeah, that happens all the time. Right, right. And they surface and they're like, I've got my tricky tray gift. And I'm like, all right, exactly. let's go. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. So that's good. Okay, so now um, the other thing that I wanted, so, so the bottom line on that is it is, it is a long-term strategy. It's not always going to turn around and happen in the exact minute that somebody has you there is going to turn into a client, but you never know when that particular person either be, will find themselves in a position or can refer you. Okay. And then the other right. thing about it is, is I just want to add that I know with window works, I'm not as intentional as you are with it, okay? And also, too, it's a little different for us because our consult is free. So I'm giving, um, I'm usually giving a $250 off a purchase, okay? Right. So, right. and you know, there aren't too many window treatments that cost $250. I'm just going to tell you right now, right? So it's like, okay, it's going to cost <laughs> me $1,000 and I'm going to get $250 off, yay, right? Right, um, right. So it's a, it's a little bit, actually your services are much more suited to this than my window treatment model is. However, I do it as goodwill because the, the women and the men that are on these committees, they just want baskets. They just want baskets full. And, and right. the reason that I'm bringing this up is because what I can tell you is you can't assume because you were part of an event one year that the committee is going to be organized enough to remember to call you the next year. No, they will not That's be right. organized enough to yeah. do that. But also the other thing about putting it out there is you're putting your name in a place where, well, for me, I, I market to families. I want families as my clients. So I'm putting my name in front of mm -hmm. those people. So they might not do it this year or they might call me next year because they remembered. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. and, well, that's why Window Works does it too. I don't really care yeah. if you never. I, I'm going to tell you what. In 37 years, we have done probably at least three to five every single year, every single year. And I think I might have five people total that have ever used it, literally have ever called me up and used it. Because like I said, the model isn't exactly the same, right? But, no, but, it's but also, the thing, it just shows it gives, but it gives you more credibility in your community. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't ever look at it and say, this never works. Everything. I don't look at it from my standpoint. In other words, when the new high school, you know, co-chair comes in or the grammar school co-chair comes in, <laughs> I don't ever say, you know, I've never gotten any business from this. I'm not doing it again. I'm like, yes, yes, please tell all your other friends and all the other grammar schools because it is a goodwill thing. And my, right. my card and my gift and my offer is sitting there in front of everybody at the event and nothing else to all the people that are working on the event. That's eight or 10 moms that are exactly. working on the event. So yeah. Exactly. And I just look at it as community awareness, but I do think that it's a viable way. Of course, you're proving the point. It's a viable way to build a customer and client base, especially when you're starting out. So, so yes. good for you. I love it. Now, the Thank other you. thing I wanted to ask, ask you about was, you know, you're designing your own fabrics. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, there was a period where I had to step back from the business for a little while. I had a, a kid homesick for a while and I was bored out of my skull. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and I started playing with pattern and I, I don't, it, it all was very serendipitous and, and fell easily together. I figured out, okay, I can take this pattern and I can have it digitally printed and I can, you know, have it digitally printed on Belgian linen or on hemp fabric or on duck fabric or whatever and you know pick my colors and sort of do anything that I want and one of the things that I have seen as a designer is if we want to make a fantastic set of pillows or drapes we are slaves to the repeat of that mm -hmm, fabric mm -hmm. and if I want to make a pillow and the repeat is 24 inches if I want to make two pillows, I need whatever, five yards of that <laughs> fabric. And it is all of a sudden completely not financially viable to have that particular fabric on a pillow mm. um, because there's just too much waste and it's too expensive. Um, and then also doing custom coloring was you've got to have a five yard minimum and it's going to take three months and there's an upcharge on the price. So the, way that I designed the fabrics was that I would always be able to get a 20 inch pillow out of both sides out of one yard mm. of fabric and that it because it was digitally printed we could color match to anything right. and the provider that I use that does my printing for me their strike offs are very very reasonable so there doesn't need to be this upcharge there's also I only have a yard minimum you don't have to buy more than a yard of fabric. Um, just trying to keep the price point down and trying to keep the, you know, it's it's all made in the United States because that's important because I actually don't want to travel to another country to figure out <laughs> how to do all of this. Right. <laughs> so I didn't have the bandwidth for that. But so I developed my own patterns and named them after all the girls that we worked with or had in our lives and just had a lot of had a lot of fun with it it's not something that i've put in showrooms or anything like that it's just sort of it's not something that i'm ever going to blow up and have this fabric empire but it's something that's a pure creative outlet for me that i just love to spend time with just to pattern play and color play and and figure out something that's new and fabulous that i haven't seen but i would like to have Okay. Okay. Interesting. And so, um, how did you, where did you know how to go research somebody to create these fabrics for you and yada, yada, yada? I didn't at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, luckily in my past life, I was a concierge and I know how to just keep hammering away at it until you find the answers. So it, it took time, but I, at that particular juncture, had time to spend on it and drilled down and drilled down and drilled down and finally found the right people. I did go through one um, producer that ended up being too problematic and had to, you know, pivot and find somebody else and, and redesign things and recolor things. And so there was some frustration and some learning curves there. But I, I, I did. I, I figured it all out from wow. scratch. I didn't know anybody who was doing it. So I was, you know, going to, I would go to CEUs about fabrics and I would go to different vendors and listen to, you know, somebody's giving a presentation on their fabric line and, and listen to all that and try and glean as many details or ask questions afterwards. But um, I did a couple of factory tours, but it was really just me trying to reinvent the wheel all by myself. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And the, th and the thing about it is, is that you're, like you said to your, you're not interested in mass production, go into the world, but you use it for your own projects and, um, mm -hmm. you utilize it into what you're doing in your design. Well, yes. And the patterns tend to be things that will sort of underline the drama of, say, a really beautiful, big, bold Schumacher print. And the advantage of having my own patterns is that I can create exactly 
what I feel is lacking out there that I'm not finding at that particular moment. But also, I'm, I'm a little matchy-matchy, so I want it to be the exact right color. And with the digital printing, I've got, you know, this giant book of right. colors that's kind of magic. Right. So that's just that's the fun of it for me. Yeah. Well, that's like it sounds like the Comfort Tux Color Lux program. You know, that's right. are you familiar with Comfort Tux Color Lux? It's the I don't think so. Yeah. So Comfort Tex is a window treatment supplier, wholesaler to window treatment mm -hmm. dealers. And they have cellular shades, roller shades, and fabrics that are digitally printed. And you can, as us as a window treatment uh, dealer or you guys as interior designers, if you have an account or you go to your window treatment professional like us, and if you want a cellular shade in Revere Pewter, because that's the color of your, your walls, you you don't have right. to be sitting there and looking at the the available deck of stock colors and saying, you know, that gray's too green, that gray's too blue, that gray's too purple. It's like I'll take one Revere Pewter, please. You know what I mean? And because it's right. digitally so you're printed, just, you're doing a doing a color match. Yeah, yeah, and it's and there's and there's no upcharge for it. You know, like it's just just say that's the color you want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, which yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and so it's it's a game changer for us as window treatment professionals because, you know, it's so funny because. Because, you know, we, I'm going to tell you what, in 37 years, if I've sold, I don't know, I can't even tell you, 5,000 pleated shades, cellular shades, you know, 4,950 of them have been in white or off-white. Like, that's right, just the truth. Right. But the reality is probably 4,000 of those times, the white was a little too white and the off-white was a little too off-white. And right. it just was what it was. And you get over it, lady. That's it. Take your pick. And now it's like, oh, want a little like Goldilocks. You want a little more of this. You want a little more of that. Here you go. <laughs> well, and we are, we have gotten used to having, we want to have whatever we want. Right, right, right. And we've gotten used to that. And the reality of making that actually happen is a lot more complicated than I think people realize. So when we can land on ways to give that to our our clients it, it's it's amazing right right exactly exactly so so good I mean what else would you think you listen to the show Carolyn what else would you think that you sit there and think please 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 let me tell the designers this please let me tell my friends this that you know this was a big lesson I learned or a challenge I've overcome or something that you look back on and want to tell and share I think that it was actually just in the last couple of years. I think I was listening to, I was listening to Amy Flurry about PR, mm. and it sort of underlines what we've already been talking about. You know, PR is sort of something that you have to chip away at, chip away at, chip away at, and part of it, she, what she said was, you have to look at why are you doing the PR? What are you looking to get from the PR? And if I go to be in House Beautiful, that's going to be a huge ego boost, but it might not necessarily land me a new client. But if I'm going after a local publication, the people in my area are going to see that. And that was a big, um, that was a big aha mm. for me because PR is expensive and it is something that you have to – it's not something you can do for a couple of months and have it work. Right. You have to do it for the long term. Right. And so going after what's going to work, which, you know, going after the, the auction things, it, it sounds a little paltry. But it's also you never know where your big your next big client is coming from. Right. And so you, you, you want to go – to where you want to be, I guess. Mm, right, exactly. I love it. And it's the truth. Amy Fleury did talk about that on the show, and also uh, Andrew Joseph has talked about that on the show. It, it, is, it is to get clear in what your goal is. If you right. are, if your goal is to do work and you're not, you know, Barclay Butera, then probably Architectural Digest isn't the place that you want to get your work in. You want to get your work in your local regional publication, right? Right. And you're going to have a better chance of getting into the local regional mm -hmm. publication mm -hmm. than your, if everybody is clamoring to be an Architectural Digest, mm -hmm. you've got a lot tougher sell 
to get into it. And I also remember, do you remember her also explaining that you have to do the rounds in your local to show the body of work that's been published right. before you can even attempt to get the attention of the big guys, national guys, right? Right. That was the other part of it. But it, I think the other thing that I've learned about it is that it, the PR gets you the credibility, but it's all sort of tied up in each other. I can't just do marketing to the schools. I've also got to do the PR and I've got to do the networking and I've got to have my portfolio up on my website and I have to have my website up to date and I have to have my Instagram posts and I have to have... Oh, is exhausting but, <laughs> <laughs> but all of those things are going to work together so you cover all of your bases but you're doing it in a way that in not just because each we, other, right yeah but not just because we have to be doing all these steps but what's the result we want to get from the steps and being a lot more intentional we can all put pretty pictures up on instagram all day long but we've got to have some intention right Right. behind it so right. that it it underlines the rest of the things that we want to do mm -hmm. I guess yeah no I agree and the thing is you know to your point PR is expensive and it's either expensive in money or time because right. I know a lot of interior designers that based on um, Amy Flurry's advice and Andrew Joseph's advice on the different podcasts and of course Amy's got her two books a uh, recipe for press and recipe for Pre for press for interior designers um, you know you can also mount your own little PR campaign and you can be very effective I know Sarah Brennan from Sarah Lynn Brennan interiors she's in business it's not even two years and she's been featured in six publications because she sits and listens to episodes like Amy's and Andrew's and Ashley Hotham, Hotham Cox's episodes and she puts it into action now, and then what happens is you reach a point in your business maybe you're 10 or 15 years in and you hire a PR agent so the right. point is it's money or time it's one or the other right right so you either you either don't sleep or you, <laughs> or you pay the dollar bills <laughs> or you pay the dollar bills to have other people do it for you so you get to sleep right right and and that is a, a reflection of where you are in your business and that is the point of it is that it's not a closed opportunity to you but you always at every level of your business you have to evaluate what do I always say is you know are, am I sitting here doing a $20 hour job or the $100 hour job like what am right. I doing and I have to tell you how many times in a week I say to myself my my goodness, Luann, this is a $20 an hour job. Get out of here. You know what I mean? That Find a, your that people. Was, I listened to that. That was a good, that was really good advice. Yeah. Am I doing the thing that's going to get me the $1,000 or am I doing the thing that's costing me I could have an intern be doing right, this. Right. It's, like it's I, really, really good way to look at things. It's the truth. I, I will literally, because you know what? It's not that you don't, there's a lot of $20 hour jobs that are connected to both window works and a right. podcast that I like to do. I like them. I like the process and, of them, but I'll be sitting there. I'll be like, Oh my goodness, get out of here. <laughs> this is what you have people for. You have to get up here and you have to do this. So if you're in your interior design firm, you have to get up higher and you have to be the rainmaker and you have to be, that's what I'm always saying. I'm like, am I producing income now or am I in the weeds? What am I doing? But that's why, so that's what's going to make me stay up and do my PR efforts because that's the $1,000 an that's hour right. stuff. Yes, it is. That's, yes, it is. And, that's what you, and you have to keep telling yourself that when you, oh, you got to keep hitting it, keep plodding away because that that's the stuff that you don't necessarily see the results right away, but when you do, it's big. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And that's also why I harp on the systems and creating the systems because, you know, if I want to walk away from the $20 an hour task, everybody behind me better know how to do it. I can't be the only one that knows how to do it. Right. So right. yes, <laughs> you know, I have to be able to, like, you might have to drag me away from it, but you should behind me know how to, or next to me know how to do it. And I have to say my, my assistant calls me out on it a, a thousand times a week. She's just like, seriously, what are you doing? Stop. Like I, I why do are, that. I'm like, Oh yeah. Right. Why are, you, why are you doing this? We have people who can do this. Yeah. Like what? Okay. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. She's, would you please get on the phone and sell some sponsorships? I'm like, yeah. Okay. Bye. All right. Let me go do that. <laughs> See, because they, you're, you can 
you're the person who has to do those things. That's right. That is the $1,000 an hour job, the $100 an hour job. It's like the rainmaker. As the principal of your firm, you are the rainmaker. And what do you do? What do you spend your time? You have to have, what was it, Krista Cooper, way, way, way back. She's up in your area, in the San Francisco area. And way, way back in the first year of the the podcast, she said, you know, you want to be billable, what, 50% of the time as the principal, but the other 50% of the time, you should be looking for business. You should be doing things that connect you with new business. Right. And then your other people are supposed to be billing at 80, 90% of the time because they're doing the stuff that you don't have to do. That's right. That's right. They can do it. That's right. right. I've worked with Krista. She's amazing. She is. Isn't she? Isn't she terrific? Yep. Yep. And, um, and so, um, it's, it's funny that, that, came to my mind about I just got San Francisco in my brain because of you but she's a very smart lady and she shared that and so and so that's a thing and so the thing is that though this is a, a really I, I love something that has a straight line I love something that I can visualize get you know hanging up or you know clicking off the podcast and there's a straight line in a task to do literally you can click off the podcast start to google the different school districts in your area Just right build your spreadsheet that's it and- build a spreadsheet yep. start to make the phone calls and let them know that you're available and you want to be on the donation list you can now if you if you are like Carolyn and your summer months are a little bit slower than the fall and the Christmas months are, then, you know, go make your beautiful donation card now. Make your presentation. Make your figure it out. What are you going to do? Are you going to put a, you know, a bag of coffee with it? You're going to put a pillow with it? You're going to put a tea towel with it? What the heck are you going to put? Like, you got to put some pretty thing with it, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you kind of do have to do put a pretty thing with it. <laughs> Otherwise, it gets sort of lost in the pile of all the pretty things. You want to know what I do at Window Works? You know what I do? I literally, every time they come and they're like, oh, would you like to? I was like, I absolutely want to donate a gift certificate. And they're like, okay, so, but I'm going to do nothing but give you a gift card. You have to make it pretty. And they just look at me. I'm like, will you make it pretty? Because if you're not going to take the time to make it pretty, there's no point. And they're like, no, 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 we'll make it pretty. I'm like, okay, good. So they put it in a basket. They put it in a presentation because I'm not doing that. There's no way. I don't have time for See, that. See, but I'm too much of a control freak. Of course, have, you guys I, are nuts. I have left it, but, but the whole reason, like, you're going to hire me because I make things pretty absolutely so I, I better do it myself maybe that's yeah. why nobody ever uses our coupons <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. There you go. That could be it, right? (laughs) There's a little aha moment for me. (laughs) Oh, man. So I love it, though. I love anything that can help a entry-level business really with intention create some sort of plan that can result in you're sitting here in the summer or fall, whatever it is, when you're listening to this of 2019, and you legitimately could have some appointments on your calendar and possibly some projects in the books a a year from now with a strategy like this. That's the reality of it. And so I love it. So, so good, Carolyn. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your idea with us and how it's helped you build your business. And of course, now so many of those beginning uh, consultations have become the repeat clients that have been contributed to your business, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have to look out, though, because now there's going to be competition at the auction. (laughs) (laughs) It's a race for the prettiest pillow, folks. (laughs) That's awesome. Thanks so much, Carolyn. Thank you, Luann. I appreciate it. Have I ever told you this story on the podcast about this time that I was watching Oprah? Okay, so this is going to go back into the late 80s. I was in my mid-20s, okay? And this particular show that Oprah had was all about how to be healthy, live a long life, look gorgeous, living that life, right? And she had different experts on the show, and one was a dermatologist. And Oprah and this dermatologist are going through the dermatologist, you know, top 10 tips for keeping your skin and healthy and, you know, looking young and yada, yada, yada. And of course, I, you know, who doesn't need to know these, you know, important things, right? So the thing is, her Oprah and the doctor are going through it. And she's, you know, telling us this tip and that cream and this and stuff. And finally, it comes all, the build up all the way to the number one thing that you must do to 
make sure that your skin and your face is young and healthy looking your whole life, right? And then what do they do? They cut to commercial break. So you got to remember, there's no DVR then. There's no like, oh, I'll just Google it on YouTube. It was like you had to sit and watch it. And I'm waiting. I'm thinking to myself, oh, don't let the baby start crying. Don't let the phone ring because I got to see this number one tip. All right, big build up. She's back. The big reveal. Oprah says, what's the number one thing? And and, you know, the, the PowerPoint on the screen goes over and it's use sunscreen. Okay. I remember thinking, what? <laughs> like, don't forget, this is the 80s. We didn't have sunscreen in all of our makeups and we didn't all talk about this in the 80s, right? It was just starting to be a thing. And I'm just like, use sun like that's it like I'm thinking there's going to be this amazing magic potion elixir cream that I'm going to have to beg the Vin man could you buy it for me for my birthday I know it's so silly expensive but it's sunscreen and I remember thinking just go to the CVS and get sunscreen you see it seems so easy it seems so accessible right it seems so inexpensive that I almost dismissed it that's the truth. And the thing is, but I didn't because I believe Oprah, number one, let's just be serious. If Oprah says it, <laughs> I mean, come on, we're going to do it, right? Um, but the thing is, is that I just, I'm like, okay, this is a dermatologist. This is Oprah. And they say this is the thing to do. So I started wearing sunscreen every day, seven days of the week. I don't know how good it served me, <laughs> but, but I did it. And that's what I want you to think about with Carolyn's strategy here. Don't dismiss this gift card strategy as being too simple and too easy. Okay. Now, instead, you might be randomly doing it like we are at Window Works, right? You know, but what I'm saying is, is organize it, make it a spreadsheet, intentionally investigate the schools in your area. And like Carolyn said, just go to the websites, find out when all their, um, you know, benefits are and find out who's running them. Make a list. Okay. Well, I, I can tell you this, we're going to be doing this at window works. Now I'm not going to leave this to chance anymore because what I love about it is, first of all, it is a long-term strategy. Okay. Um, I'm not thinking we're going to do it. And then next week we're going to start to get phone calls, but I know that I've always done it because I've had nothing to lose and I thought it was a good thing to do for the community. But the only ones we ever do are the ones that remember to come in and call us or email us or walk into us and ask us, right? So I haven't thought of it as a strategy. And I like the idea of thinking of it as a strategy. And also now with the mom's Facebook groups and stuff, if you start to do some goodwill and you make it easier for these women that are running families and probably have jobs and then they're volunteering for these committees, if you just raise your hand and you say, hey, saw that you were going to do it, you're making their life a little easier. And if you start a little conversation, you build a relationship with them. Okay. Now they're going to start to talk about you in the Facebook groups. They're going to start to tell their friends about you. And this is all in addition to possibly the person who bids on and wins your two hour consult. Like it's, I, it's, it's, it's sunscreen. It's so simple. It was right in front of my eyes and I never took it down the next step of intention. So I want you to do this. This is one of those tips that are super easy to do. I mean, honestly, what is it, two hours on a Saturday to turn around or give it to an intern to investigate the 15 or 20 schools in a 20-mile radius from you? This is not a big, drawn-out project, but this that's what I love about it. Just do it, and over the next couple of years, I'll bet it grows your business, okay? So... Let me know if you try it. I'd be interested to know a year or so, so from now if it's been working for you, okay? Now, before I go, I want to say just two things for you, to you, okay? The first one is a big, huge thank you. If you are one of the designers who has tagged me in social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and 
had a picture of my book there, whether you've been on the beach or you've been, you know, sitting down on, uh, you know, at the end of the day with a glass of wine or, you you know, wherever you guys have been reading the book on a plane. Some people have tagged, tagged me with pictures that they're on a plane and um, tagged me and have said how much you're enjoying the book. So I just have to say thank you. It's, it's such a fun thing to be sitting there doing whatever I'm doing and see that little number, or <laughs> little, you know, notification and to read what you're writing about reading the book. How's that for English? Read what you're writing about reading the book. Um, so thank you, truly. And I want to say one other thing with it. If you have read the book and you have enjoyed it, would you do me a huge favor and go over to Amazon and Goodreads and review the book, okay? We all know how, you know, when we put out a work product, how cool it is to get the high five. And we all know that the reviews, the public reviews of it are even, you know, look, the the private, you know, review to me is amazing. And that's the number one value, right? But the public review is also insanely valuable on every, uh, every level. Okay. So, and I also want to say by all means, if you have read the book and you have a favorite chapter or two, call that author out in the review, give the love to, to that author. Okay. 100% because this is a shared work on our part. And, um, if somebody's chapter speaks to you and you really feel like, whoa, eye opener, then yeah, put that in the review too. Okay. And if you don't have the book yet, you can go over to luannnigara.com forward slash book two. Okay. luannnigara.com forward slash book two. All righty. Go, go make some money. Go make some lucky client happy. Go create a business you love and a business that's profitable. All right. Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.